So today's topic, we are starting with mass movements. Uh, why? Because I think looking at the landslides we have had in India as disasters, uh, looking at uh, uh, you know the mud flows we have because of the rain. So I think this could be an important discussion. And this also is part of officially declared disasters in India. These are the potential disasters we are vulnerable to. So mass movements, there are three or four points. Number one is, this is basically a type of okay, unconsolidated uh, material and debris moving down the slopes. Now, mass movements will include uh, rock slides, debris slides, landslides, rock falls. We also have uh, soil slum, soil slum, and uh, most of these ones, the ones I mentioned right now, uh, rock slides, debris slides, landslides, rockfall and slums, these are more or less related to relatively drier sediments and they're related to more of coarse sediments. But if we add water and moisture to it, then we have a whole range of another type of mass movements such as okay, uh, soil flow, we can have soil creep. Uh, soil creep is relatively slower, okay, whereas soil flow, also called as solifluxion, this happens in conditions of saturation. Then we have one related to uh, volcanic eruptions. So when we have volcanic dust and volcanic ash, plus water, when that flows down, it's called as leher. We can also talk about uh, soil flows in conditions of very glacial condition. We call this as jelly fluxion, or now it's also called as corn jelly fluxion. If this word is used, this is related to the periglacial processes. Now, corn jelly fluxion plus all other type of mass movements of periglacial, they together are also called as corn jelly turbation. Basically, I'm looking at equation, what are mass movements? Discuss the types of mass movements and the causes. This is the equation I'm looking at. So, what are what is mass movement? So mass movement would imply all of this, any kind of movements of unconsolidated material and debris. And a very important point is that all this movement happens under the influence of gravity. So the agency of the mass movement is gravity. So we basically have a slope, and from the slope, the material slats starts sliding down. Now, what are the factors that control mass movement? The factors include the slope steepness, how steep it is. The factor also includes the relative nature of the sediments, presence or absence of moisture. If there is moisture or water, it can aggravate. It also depends on the presence or absence of vegetation. And in recent times, you can also add the factors related to human modification. So this is more or less what is mass movement? What are the types of mass movement? Types of mass movements I have divided broadly in terms of the mass movement under dry conditions, but the amount of moisture is less. And mass movement when there is amount of moisture or a bit of soil saturation. So we have leher, we have soil creep, soil fluxion, and in periglacial conditions, you may talk about corn jelly fluxion, though the more recent word that we have is a term called as corn jelly turbation. I'll take you through some of the pages of the textbooks where some of these terms are mentioned. And what are the factors impacting it? The factors include the soil steepness, the nature of sediments, moisture availability, vegetation, 
and the human modification factors. Now, we have a formula which was given by Barnes and Shorley talking about mass movement factors and continuing factors. Barnes, DJ Barnes, and Shorley have defined that uh, uh, we can discuss about mass movement vulnerability on the basis of what's called as factor of safety, which is equal to strength of shear resistance of material divided by magnitude of shearing forces. So the factors that impact mass movement are of two types. Factors that reduce the shear resistance and factors that increase the strength of the shearing forces. So these are the two sets of factors which impact how vulnerable one area will be to landslides. So what are the factors that reduce shear resistance? We have got slope modifications. Slope modifications can reduce Reduction of shear resistance can also be because of overland flow. It can be because of undercutting. If there is a slope, if there is some kind of a slope and there is undercutting, even that can increase. They think of this as a mountain and somebody has dug up this part here. So if this part gets dug up, so it's undercutting. So this slope now gets vulnerable to collapse. So undercutting also. And what are the forces that increase the shearing? The forces strength will be factors like tectonic reasons. It could be earthquakes. It could be uh, compressive forces. They can also be related to factors like construction and vibration. So the factors that cause Earthquake vulnerability are some of these. So now look at your screen. I've taken some pages right from your textbook. How do you define and how do you explain mass movements? This is page number 257. If you have your geomorphology textbook by Samindra Singh. So mass movement, it says, is one type of detachment and the downslope detachment and the downslope transport of soil and rock material under the influence of gravity. These kind of definitions you actually can remember. And this includes, and this includes sliding and the flowage of material due to the gravitational forces. And this type of mass movement, if you classify, you can look up your textbook page number 258 and 59. 258 has okay, a list of the mass movement. We have landslides, soil slums, soil creep, rock creep, soil fluxion. So a couple of terms are there. Now directly, if I move towards what are the factors impacting? What are the factors that impact? So this is that ratio that I was talking about, given by Barnes and uh, Shorley is the factor of safety, Fs, is the strength of or the shearing resistance of material. So if by some factor, the shearing resistance becomes less or some factor by which the magnitude of shearing forces becomes more, the areas can have landslides. And we have this name of Barnes. Barnes, he says, there are two broad categories, factors which increase the shearing forces and factors which reduce the resistance of material to st uh, shear stresses. So the next page has a, quite a bit of list. If you can look up your page number, I have not taken it on my scan copy, 262. There are a couple of points here. Stream erosion, glacial erosion, construction, accumulation of debris, loss of vegetation, factors like vibration, undercutting by rivers. So pick up three, four terms and I'll suggest Make a small table out of this. I get small table in probably six, seven points. Factors that reduce the uh, shearing resistance and factors which include the increase the magnitude of the shear forces.